Chapter nine. The kids waited in room 203, right across the hall from 202. They took turns peeking out the little peephole. Poor old Clint is sure gonna be surprised when he finds out there's nothing but jammies inside your bare roof rows and three cops in the closet. Dink kept his eye on the peephole. Josh picked up a magazine and began to read. Ruth Rose did a crossword. Oh no, Dink yelled. Josh bolted up, is it Clint? No, it's them. Standing in the hallway, surrounded by luggage were Dink's parents and Josh's and Ruth Rose's families. Look who I found in the lobby, Dink's mom said. Everybody, you have to get in here now and be quiet. What do you mean, what's going on? Mom and dad, please, everyone, just come in, okay? We'll explain. Okay, but this is pretty mysterious. The six adults and three little kids all lug their stuff into room 203. Dink closed the door. Okay, now everyone has to be real quiet, especially you two, Josh told his twin brothers, Brian and Bradley. We're always quiet, but I'm the quietest. Guys, this is serious. So if everyone could just please sit down somewhere, Josh, Ruth Rose, and I will tell you what's going on. When Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose had finished telling the story, their family stared at them. No one said a word. Even the twins and Nate sat there with their mouths open. If I have this right, we're waiting for this thief to show up and burgle Ruth Rose's room? Why wasn't I informed of this scheme? We didn't really think of it till after you left, but don't worry, the cops are across the hall. This is the most exciting Thanksgiving I've ever had. Cops and robbers is a lot more fun than eating turkey. It's after 12. When is this burglary supposed to happen? Suddenly, they all heard a loud noise. Freeze, police! It's Clint, they got him. Josh ran to the door. You freeze too, young man. No one goes into the hall until the police say it's safe. After three or four long minutes, they all heard a light knock on the door. Three police officers stood there surrounding Clint. He was in handcuffs. Mission accomplished, the female officer said. She handed the teddy bear to Ruth Rose. Clint looked at Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose. I'm really sorry. The kids didn't say anything. Ruth Rose hugged her teddy bear and they, as the officers led Clint down the hallway. The three families unpacked. Dink's father kept muttering to Dink, I'll let you out of my sight for two days and suddenly there are trap doors and burglars. Why can't you kids just watch TV like normal kids? Because you keep telling me not to watch TV and I always do what you tell me to do. Finally, everyone was settled and unpacked. They all decided to spend the afternoon at Plymouth Plantation. It was a short drive from the hotel. After they parked, the three families walked into the village. They saw small wooden homes with thatched roofs. They were all dressed the way people from England would have dressed in the early 1600s. The group split up and agreed to meet back at the entrance in one hour. Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose wandered the gravel path. They peeked inside homes where women cooked, sewed, or did their chores. This is how the village looked in 1627, Ruth Rose read. They even shared a cow so everyone could have milk. Josh stopped in front of a small building. It had only one small window. A man in dark clothing was standing in the doorway. This is the village jail. Wrongdoers had to spend time in here. What kind of crimes did they commit? Being lazy, not sharing, not attending church. If you stole a pig or a hen, that would get you in here too. I wonder if Clint will go to jail. I mean, he didn't really steal anything. He would have if we didn't stop him. Don't forget that Clint broke into your room and he threatened to let the rats get us. Yeah, you're right. The kids kept wandering. They saw men and women working in gardens. They looked inside small rooms. Each child held a small slate and, ch and chalk. I've been thinking about the necklace we found. I think we should donate it to the Pilgrim Hall Museum. Excellent. That way, everyone who visits would get to see Emma Brown's jewelry. Cool idea, Ruth Rose. Remember that pamphlet about the muddlesome Mayflower mystery? Well, if we give the necklace to the museum, people can see the necklace and know the mystery has been solved. Chapter 10. The next day, the 12 family members walked to a restaurant called Pilgrim's Pantry. The sun was out and last night's snow had melted. Inside, they were greeted by a woman dressed in a white shirt, a long dark apron, and a tight-fitting white bonnet. She led them to a large round table. Turkey-shaped name cards had been set at each place and everyone found his or her seat easily. Ruth Rose sat between Dink and Josh. She was wearing the fake necklace in honor of the holiday. She had chosen pumpkin orange as her color for the day. The police called and told us you were right about the mints, Dink. They were in the Mayflower to hold on the deck and they were able to get Clint's footprints off them. So Clint's mints had prints, Josh joked. That was a great idea you kids had to give the necklace to the museum. I'm sure they'll love to have it. And of course, they'd need a picture of you three ace detectives. Awesome, I'm going to be in a museum, Josh said. 
a waiter approached their table. He wore black breeches, a white rumpled shirt, and clunky black shoes. Good afternoon, he said. Today we're serving from our regular menu, or you can order our first Thanksgiving special. Four courses of foods the pilgrims would really have eaten in 1621. That's what I want, Dink said. Did the pilgrims have pumpkin pie with whipped cream, Josh asked. The early settlers had pumpkins, but no sugar, so they probably didn't make pies. But you can order your dessert from our regular menu. Thank goodness, you saved me. They had turkeys though, right? Nate asked. Yes, wild turkeys were plentiful. They also ate clams, many kinds of fish, venison, which is deer meat, and any wild bird they could find. You folks take your time deciding and I'll stop back in a few minutes. Indians came to Plymouth to eat with the settlers, right? Yes, the Wampanoag were here. They became friendly with the pilgrims. My guidebook says almost a hundred Wampanoag people showed up to eat with the pilgrims after their first harvest. Just then, the waiter came back to take their order. The three little kids ordered from the regular menu. Dink, Josh, Ruth Rose, and their parents all decided to try the first Thanksgiving special. The waiter returned. He carried a tray holding small bowls and a covered soup tureen. Dink smelled something delicious. His mouth began to water. Of course, our first course is eel stew, the man said. May I serve you? Josh's face turned white. Um, eels? You mean those slimy things that look like snakes? He asked the waiter. The waiter nodded. May I change to the regular menu, Josh asked. That's the end of the book. So make sure that you take the AR test on this book. It is a level 4.1. It's worth two whole points. And the AR quiz number is 116909. Again, quiz number 116909. I hope you enjoyed it.